All right, guys. Playing a little raid Shadow Legends here today, and we'll go ahead and get this microphone in front of me. But it's a uh, interesting day. Just found out that my uncle passed. I wasn't ever really uh, around for the last couple of years, but uh, wanted to share a funny story of him. While, of course, just having a little raid play in the background, and you guys can see the team here running through some Doom Tower. But again, back to the story of my uncle. I uh, always appreciated one I heard from my dad. He was the kind of fellow that also appreciated getting pulled over by the police. And he was uh, running through a speed trap. This was, uh, I think, the late 80s, early 90s. And uh, the cop pulled him over and goes, License and registration. He said, uh, Why do you need that for? He said, Well, I caught you speeding. My uncle quickly said, Well, uh, why don't you jump behind them bushes and try to catch the next one and leave me alone? Needless to say, they became fast friends, and the cop laughed, and he laughed, and they drove off. By that, I mean my uncle got a ticket. And uh, almost got arrested. But uh, the moral of the story is sometimes you just have to uh, you know, be funny where you can. No, it looks like it froze. No, that's really just the, uh, the moral of the story. Just be funny where you can. See what happens. Alright. Well, uh, again, doing some Doom Tower here today. Nothing crazy. And uh, I'm going to finish this up. Hopefully uh, show you guys a little bit of the uh, the team that I got going on. It is an attack specialty team. And I've uh, thrown in Kaimar here to, uh, or, no, that's not Kaimar, that's uh, Ixidor, to uh, have HP burn just for when I run into the uh, Ice Spider. Seems to be a lot easier to use him. And uh, also to use uh, Miss Z here who can... Uh, block revive because that spider is a pain in the butt when it comes back up. Anyways, just running through here. Currently, uh, nothing really difficult on the normal Doom Tower. You can see it's uh, running through pretty well on auto. Let's see here. 54. Should be a couple of minutes. We'll jump up. I actually haven't looked to see which uh, boss is on this uh, set of levels, but we'll get it done. And for those of you, looks like I do have a viewer. Thank you for joining. For those of you that have uh, seen this, if you have any questions or comments or uh, recommendations for Raid, uh, we can chat about that. Also, I wanted to let you know that we'll be doing the 120 shard pop in order to get the new champion that's out. It is a reflect damage barbarian champion. Pretty nifty stuff. So, I'm going to try to get for that again. It's uh, a good event if you're trying to build up your roster for quality champions in both uh, the campaign mode as well as the arena. So it's a, uh, a good place if you have some, you know, ancient shards you've not popped. I don't recommend popping any of the gold ones at this point, but, you know, if you're looking to you know, blow some ancient shards, try to get some value out of it, there's enough concurrent events running on that uh, you do get that, uh, I think it's deep fucking value as the guy on Wall Street Bets who uh, had to go to Congress. He's like, so what is your username? He's like, uh, yeah, I'll tell you, but you can't uh, hold me in contempt. It was fun. That was back when stocks still made money. You know, one of the other things I haven't realized is I should probably start using either a laugh track or the cheer when I make a joke. I'm going to say no, but, uh, Part of me is like, well, maybe I should. Maybe I should. On a side note, uh, we'll be going and doing some events where people can join, watch, and win prizes. So that'll be cool. Haven't figured out what to do with that yet or how really to implement it other than some uh, PMing and making sure that uh, folks can get the, uh, the prizes. But I'll be doing uh, probably random streaming prizes as well as... Uh, timed prizes, you know, join 
join during certain events or uh, certain times during the week and get some free shit. So that'll be fun. Ugh. I do not like the fact that there's two Tormunds and uh, Skullbuster. That bastard in the back always ends up killing one of my guys. I do not know why. And then uh, I don't have any resurrection. There we go. Uh, another one, but it'll be all right. Yeah, I have no uh, no res characters on here. Typically, it's a flex spot. I'll put for uh, either of the two in the back. But uh, looks like I don't need it, so that's good. Got a lot of those A threes popped back at the right time and just melted through the enemy. Through some hit point champs. Yeah, that's one guy, Hegemon. I can grab him. I'll build him out just because of that annoying mechanic where he always goes first. You don't have to have him fast at all. Yeah, you just have to have a lot of uh, attack and a lot of ACC so where he uh, basically blocks the moves of all the other champions that he's fighting against. He's a monster in arena if he's built correctly. Uh, some people do have him built correctly, some people just have him. And if they screw up and put either too much ACC or not enough attack, or too much attack and not enough ACC, you can usually get through it. So you gotta make sure that you kinda double down on him if you're gonna use him. Otherwise, it's not overly worth it. some gems. A lot of value in the tower. So, I mean, you'll, you'll pick up a lot of uh, gems, gold, things like that. And it's worth it to play through. Each of the uh, 10 floors you'll get usually between a uh, 15, 25 gem pack. And, you know, you can use those to get additional items such as the Ancient Shards, that's what I use it for a lot. And uh, you can also use it to get energy or keys for the uh, the big clan boss. Which if you're not doing the clan boss with a good clan that's getting it to 100% defeated, you're not uh, making the gains that you could be. A lot of the gains, and I'll pull that up right after this fight, a lot of the really cool shit that you can get in the game for the least amount of money or like near zero toward the end game is in the clan boss. So it's one of the few places that you're able to get certain two piece armor sets like the immortal and also one of the few places that will drop gold shards for you. And you know, it'll also do void shards, things like that. Are we, are we here yet? There we go. All right. Let's see what we can do with the dragon. He's not too bad as long as you give him a good kick in the teeth early. Oof. Yeah. Melt through those guys. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I think we got this. Yeah, good, good start, good lead. Let's see here. The hex. Alright, well we got the shields up and the counterattack. Try to do a stoke the flames. We got hit point burn, but we don't care about that. It's not gonna affect us and he'll cleanse here by the time he gets another turn, so there it is, boom done. Again, Zabi is an absolute beast when you mix with uh, bad ale, Draco Morph. I mean the poison stacks, she'll instantly pop them and it's just like melt. It's just a beautiful thing. Before I forget, let's see here. Let's get some. So I didn't find this out until much later. Oh, defense? Yeah, that's gonna be sexy. Uh, we'll go one. I haven't had her built yet. Two, three, four. 
she'll revive, worst case scenario. So, one res in the defense build, and a lot of aggressive protectors. That's how they go through. Bit of a slog, but won't be terrible. Should be fun. Like, oof. Buy one, get one on the uh, negative status effects. Yeah, I've got to try to get rid of the Alt End. I'm glad they're just naturally gone for him. A dude can totally wreck face as a damage defense dealer. Oh. Had a call hitting him. Raisin Scarhide, the guy on the bottom right, is probably the best champion that uh, the game will give you through playing. And that you can unlock. You can only do it once. I uh, picked up another one via a shard event. I uh, just randomly summoned him. But uh, I mean, he he has a great toolkit. You can either build him out for damage. Uh, I recommend building him out for ACC so that he can do stuff like drop their turn rate meter again and just go to work. Because he's got a lot of special abilities in his kit that, even though he's one of the first champions, still completely relevant. Boom. So, I didn't realize that every time you go through these sidebars, you build up to the next one. So, I'm way behind here. I don't even know who that guy is or if they've released him yet. But I was like, how do you get Dark Kale? Well, apparently it's through this event. Through the tower. I was like, well, shit. So I didn't do that. Alright, let's go to Arena. I promised that. Or not Arena. I promised the clan boss goodness. So, Ultra Nightmare, you'll see that there's actually times two because he was defeated. And that's really, again, where that value is. You want to be able to get two chests per day, not one. So let's see here. First one. Oh, gold shard off the top, baby. That's what I'm talking about. So it's a five-star immortal. It's got speed and crit rate and accuracy. It's actually a really good piece. But the problem is that it's a five, not a six-star. So I'm like, I'm not taking it. And then next up, another five-star. I mean, I got a gold book. I'm not mad about that. Hit points, again, crit rate and damage resistance, but it's just not that six star. So you spend a lot of gold on a non six star and it ends up being garbage. So well, that's fun. So here's the basic build. Um, Deadwood Jedi, Hell Hades have a uh, partnership going on. And I used the calculator and recommendation from Deadwood Jedi to build this out. Um, it's usually a two key guaranteed, uh, you know, 72 million dollar damage over uh, that big heavy bastard so that's pretty nice dollars aside I'll show you how it works so the idea is that you're really doing as much damage on boss count 0 through 50 so the first guy you need to use your A1 you just attack boom now here you want to speed everybody up, give them a little extra damage. Boom. Turn three, another man eater. He's the slow one. So you just want to attack. <clears throat> Here, she'll use combat tactics and it reduces the cooldown of everybody. And it's kind of wasted because Draco Morph doesn't get the, the benefit. But you want to start with the A3, Baleful Eye, pop that on, boom. Decreased defense, a little weakness there. All right, so we went through a lap of them. It's boss count turn, boss count turn one. So again, you're using the A1. You can use the A2, but I've just seen that the A1 works better. There you go. 
Uh, because of her, his ability reset. So you boost everybody's turn meter again and give him additional attack. And then he attacks again. Boom. Again, A1. Simple attack. For her, her A2. It gives everybody a 10% increase to their bar. And then he'll poison the crap out of them. There we go. Now here, we've taken basically three laps. This is the beginning of the third lap. So this makes everybody immune to death and they can't get any negative status effects anymore. That's those two right there. So you have to make sure that these guys begin using that uh, to keep everybody immortal on the right turns. So you stay manual. He attacks. I use the A1 one more time here. I'll attack and auto. So I'm going to go switch uh, screens, look over to the other side, but you'll notice that now everybody is still in that unkillable, immortal, that's the uh, Spartan looking helmet there, and then uh, they'll continue to just attack and use their abilities, cycle through them, and you'll see that the damage we're looking I average about 48 to 52 million damage, million dollar damage as I like to call it, um, here and again about turn 50 uh, he'll get a passive, let's see where that passive is, yeah 50 turn one or block damage on killable buffs. So that's where he lifts his arms up, beats the dog shit out of my team, says thanks for playing. But able to get enough damage through in two rounds that I passed that 70 mil, 72 million threshold and that's where you start get really getting that nice stuff again you saw that I picked up a gold shard which didn't suck uh, yeah I'll totally take two pieces of uh, mediocre gear that I can turn into money for uh, a gold shard all day ideally <clears throat> um, if I didn't have these guys speed tuned and that's why uh, <clears throat> I came in and uh, was talking about using resources again, uh, Deadwood Jedi's build for this. The speed tuning is really the important thing. Uh, I had some difficulty myself getting it to, uh, I think he's like 263 speed or 283 speed, I can't remember exactly. But um, this whole team has a lot of speed boosting items and not a lot of damage boosting items at this time. I just wanted to make sure that I had it dialed in because the poison damage and the survivability is actually what's really kind of taking it home. So, you know, ideally if they were dealing more just critical hit damage or raw DPS themselves, yeah, you're able to get that over the bar, but I mean, it's the poison and the continuation therein. The, uh, let's see, another round of poison, and this guy can get 10 stacked up on him. That's nice, but honestly, I'd rather it be another poison here, but it is what it is. But you uh, continue, I think, uh, if you can get on average uh, for the boss count, it's 1.2 million or something, 1.3 million her turn, you can actually one key Ultra Nightmare. That's the gold standard if you can do that then uh, you're in there. But a two key is good because you get two keys per day. If you're not using them, why the hell not? Even at the lower levels, you're guaranteed some really swanky stuff. So you'll get blue shards, you'll get uh, legendary books occasionally at the mid tiers, you'll get uh, purple books, you'll get purple shards, you get the beginning, like I'm in I guess in-game player at this point, that's why I was kind of snooty about that five-star gear instead of six. But, you know, you're getting four and five-star gear that you can build some characters with that's really, really nice early on, and then you can just swap it up for uh, better gear. So, don't uh, don't confuse me being a snob for, you know, the, the drops being bad. And, you know, being able to get that gear, progress your characters, that's what the, the game's about, because once you get to a good character progression, you can start getting into the arena. Uh, I've not overly had an issue with the arena other than trying to get to plat. Uh, tier 5's been 
gold was like tier four gold for me. I seemed to either stay in the middle of it or drop just below for a second and then pop back up. But you know, getting getting the stuff going, getting all of that is really so you can get into the arena. And the arena allows you to win and get uh, the arena points and the the own currency that the arena has that exists nowhere else in this fucking game and improve your characters so that they will do better in events like this and the arena etc so it's very synergetic and once you get the arena coins you unlock your great hall attributes once you unlock those then your characters get better and you can start focusing on other things um, to try to make your characters more balanced because now instead of just having to say well I need to have speed and attack and crit boost and all these things you can say okay well I've got my great haul it's gonna take some of that you know hit points attack crit boost and uh, most importantly ACC and I can start focusing on building that into other areas and using other equipment which may be a little more tailored to your play style and uh, certain events that you're doing. Other than that, we're 17 turns in. It usually takes about 20 minutes. I mean, that's what it is. Just, uh, I think I've got it on as uh, fast FPS as I can. That's something I didn't find out though until later. You can turn the graphics to garbage and turn your FPS up and you'll actually be able to do events faster. So all of your events, timed events, whether it's uh, fighting in the arena, fighting the various monsters and things like that, you want to make sure that your FPS is high and unless you're just really looking at the character art, um, I would turn the uh, image quality down to low so that you can just get things moving quickly. If you want to check out the characters, there is some incredible artwork here. Just flip it for while you're looking through your you know, standard, I guess, character creation and build, armory, stuff like that. And then uh, when you're actually playing the game, yeah, flip it back to that high frame per second. Ooh. The fun part is you're watching this with me in real time. I typically don't watch this shit. I, uh, you know, turn it on hot, let it run. Once I hit auto, I'll do something else. So this takes, again, about 20-ish minutes. We're on turn 21, 8 minutes, 53 seconds. So you'll see about 10 minutes in. It's turn 25. One of the nice things is when uh, this goes on YouTube, you'll be able to see it and go, oh, shit, and just fast forward on through unless you like the uh, smooth melted chocolate that is my voice, which is also a little bit rough because uh, allergy season is among us, and the missus left the window open. So, shit. Other than that, uh, we're just literally waiting, and you'll see that, I mean, these characters have no hit points now whatsoever, and that's fine. They don't need hit points over one, and they just need to not die. And the timing is as such the reason that, um, uh, speed tuning is so critical specifically for this build is that it has the clan bosses speed timed to such a way and this group uh, built in such a way that you're literally just beating the boss to make sure that uh, your team is unkillable. It's uh, pretty valuable when you're doing this because I've, I've built various teams early in the game uh, before they did some clan boss tuning to uh, give my characters the old-fashioned jank. I did a one key, I think a one key, or a two key unkillable counterattack team. That was a lot of fun, and that was one of the really big, um, I guess, initial versions of the game, how people could go in and say, oh look, you know, I'm dealing a ton of damage because what would happen is your whole team would have counterattack and some things, you know, poison or high damage and so he'd smack them all everybody would counter attack and there would be a slow moving team which was kind of nice you wouldn't have to build out for speed he would build out for damage and they'd go you know usually one turn 
uh, they'd hit him, and then they would have counterattack, he'd hit them. They'd all counterattack, whack him, so you're getting a two to one ratio, which is nice. This actually uses speed and the uh, ability to uh, just outrun the boss to maintain that unkillable and just stay in the game until again that turn count 50. I will say that this team I've tried a couple of flex spots so Draco Morph here is your flex spot. You can use a variety of champions. Uh, Zavia is pretty good. You want to use somebody that can really bring the uh, poison. Uh, the problem is that pound for pound Draco Morph is uh, he's solid. I haven't had another champion that can actually deal as much poison consistently, uh, Zavia included, because her <coughs> her issue is you have to turn off her A3, which cleans the, uh, like it pops all the poisons at the same time, so you you think you're getting the value, but it doesn't do as much damage on him that uh, just leaving him on and letting him passively roll through, and then uh, usually you'll get other stacks that you're not looking for. I mean, even even this, uh, well, the uh, negative shield, if that could be more poison, you would be dealing more damage. Unless my characters were, again, geared with better attack, then be able to do more uh, just straight up damage. And that would be more effective. But I mean, poison's key, and Draco Morph is just a hell of a poisoner. There's other characters. Uh, I think uh, there's the purple, um, I guess, rat humanoid, mouse humanoid. Uh, she's supposed to be an excellent uh, poison deliverer, so she may be a flex spot while you're still building your account. Um, you know, the trick is really just getting the other four, and then if you need to, you know, hoard up some keys, if you're doing a three key, that's fine. You really want to make sure that you're dealing that over 70 million. So, and if you can't, uh, and your group is still, or your clan is still dealing the... Uh, the damage that'll kill him. Do what you can. Uh, get the two keys. If you're getting into that 40 mil range and you're like, well crap, I'm only doing 20 at a time, you're still going to get some value out of that. You'll still get some pretty good drops in terms of crystals and gold and gems and things like that in books. So you should always use your two keys every day. But if you're hitting 60, uh, it's a bit of a gamble, but I would say it's worth it to either tweak your characters and their armor or to just spend the 100 gems, use an extra clan boss key when they get it, get you over that 72 because that's where you start getting your 6 star armor, that's really where you start getting your gold gems and other things that are just, you know, dollar for dollar your best value. For 36, I mean, again, the total damage is close. If it was higher, I'd be able to one-key it, but it is what it is. Hmm. But it is nice. Again, he's, he would have killed everybody 20 turns ago, but he can't. They're unkillable, but in 13 turns, he will raise both hands up and he'll say enough of this shit. One of the other nice things about uh, this build, uh, it's difficult getting the man-eaters I will say that that's probably uh, your least fun part of this, and they're both required. Uh, but you are able to get uh, Old Man Bad here by playing the game, and you're also able to get her honestly through Void Shards. Once you've played for a while and you pop some Void Shards, you're going to get her. And by, by default, I've thrown tons of uh, her away as chickens and, you know, use it to build other characters, but you're, you're going to get her. The Draco Morph, again, is difficult to grab a hold of, but there are other champions that are an alternative. But once you get the two Man-Eaters, you're really going to be able to start going in and saying, all right, how do I want to 
how do I want to build this team out? How do I have the uh, flexible spots and speed to be able to say, okay, here's here's how I need to go. I think uh, I'll do another video and just show everybody some of the stats, the uh, pieces I've used to build them out. It's not um, all speed sets, funny enough. I mean, there's a lot of speed sets, uh, especially for the fast man eater on the left, because it was just damn hard to get them up to that. But you know, there's uh, I think there's like a poison set on one of them. It doesn't do anything natively to increase the speed, and I don't actually have enough ACC to do poison very often. But it was a nice thought. Getting to 43. Again, at this point, once you cross that 42 million threshold consistently, you know you're going to pop over 70. I mean, even if it's, if you're getting 37, 38, you're still good. And you'll see sometimes, like there's, I don't know what the glitch is, sometimes I'll get 9 million, I'll uh, cuss, but that happens once a week. Um, I don't know if it's because I set up the characters wrong to uh, auto run or if I did something else. But uh, otherwise, I'll, I'll consistently get between 45 and 50 mil. That's where you want to be until you really, I mean, it's frustrating as hell once you get up to about 60. Because <clears throat> at that point, you're like, oh, I'm so close to one king. But again, it's, uh, it's all about getting across that 72 million thresh line, or threshold. See how much poison damage this does. All right, so I think uh, what about 500k? I want that because he gets more and more of a pain in the ass as he goes up. 20th turn, damage is increased. I don't care. What else? Um, yeah, decreases uh, hit point and uh, poison debuffs, and uh, you know you can't do anything to him. But again, you know, the poison debuffs are still going to deal more damage over a significantly longer time. And they've done those are the sorts of tweaks that have really made it go, well, shit. Because used to, you could uh, drop a HP burn on him, a couple poisons, and you could go to town. That was a very long time ago. All right. Turn 49. We'll, uh, Probably not get to that million man mark, but uh, for the 50 at least. But it'll be nice to get close to it and he'll raise his hands up and call it adjourned. Poof, there we go. All right, 49.2, not bad. Let's see, we'll add it to him. Just pull these guys up. I'm sure, I got a claim. All right, I think I did my. Uh, We'll go ahead since I mentioned it. Why not walk through? First of all, where's the Draco Morph? There's my dude. All right, so he's running a life still two pieces, which does absolutely nothing. But I really like the stats on them. I think they are pretty stellar. We'll pull it up. So I got the speed that I needed, and the speed here, just a fiver. But uh, the whole point was trying to get to that balance speed of 223. When you're like, man, that's really fast. So I thought that was fast. Um, I realize that there's people in this game that are getting their arbiters to like 300 speed and shit. All right, so I marked them. Support, speedy. We'll go speedy first. Uh, full speed set. actually haven't increased these because I don't want them to accidentally pop into speed as a substat. So it would be just my luck. I'd be like, well, shit. 
and same thing for the chest piece in the middle. So speed five, I might actually increase that, but I don't I really care for the ACC. So you just had five speed there. That's a speed set, and let's see here. There may be uh, okay, yeah, seventeen speed accuracy and hit points. There's honestly no reason for me to not increase that, but I will do that later. But the whole point is you'll see total stats. I think I'm at 271 speed. Pretty clutch. And that's to get that two turn timetable. And then for the slow man eater, I actually got him at 247 specifically. Yeah, you know, you'll see some hit points and stuff, but when you have your gear, it's not a problem. I think it's that one staying at 11 because I don't want to pop speed as well. Because if he's too fast, then he'll uh, drop out of stuff. Oop. There we go. Yeah, so I just didn't want him to get into speed for that. I may swap that out later too, just for additional damage. Let's see here. Let's change the settings on this because this is looking like shit. My computer's being all extra options. So graphics, uh, medium. Or ultra. Yeah, we'll do ultra and 30. That way we can see characters. That'll load up. Use blue stacks. I've been considering going with the native raid application. It does seem to move a little faster, but I prefer blue stacks because I don't have to keep logging into multiple accounts. All right. So we have Seeker, a man bat. I uh, got him on a mostly speed set other than the crit damage, but I was able to get him to that 249 speed. That is the speed that you want. And uh, he is an absolute necessity for this, mostly because of his A2, and that's the tailwind. Again, feels turn read by 30% and grants an extra turn. It's just he's constantly popping that off, so you can't go without him. And then Painkeeper, uh, let's see where we got her at. She's kind of slow, but uh, she's got that 241 speed fast enough. Uh, Honestly, thought about getting Draco Morph a little faster, but I'm afraid to. So, I think uh, I'll keep him where he is. But I've got her in a poison set, funny enough. That's the one I was talking about. But her speed is exactly where I need it to be, so I haven't changed anything. And I don't want, let's see here, that's the shield. Do I have her in speed here? Okay, so speed, so I can increase that if I needed to but it's not a wreck. So some of these champions obviously have some room for growth and improvement. That might be, yeah. If I pop that to 16 and that speed goes up, that will be an awesome set piece. And I'll be madder in hell because I've got to figure out how to drop her speed again. But otherwise, there's your champion build, mine roughly. That's uh, pretty standard if you look up speed tuning uh, unkillable teams, that's right where it is. But uh, I'm gonna go jump back into the game, get some other stuff done, and if you want, I'm going to hit stop recording, but uh, I am gonna continue streaming just so you guys can see another Demon Lord run and see the consistency therein. Best part is you won't have to see me talk. So we'll battle, and you'll see like Matter of fact, I will actually close this out. We're in a pretty good clan right now. Uh, we do a lot of good work. So, you look at unkillable teams, I mean, it's it's a given. Uh, two key, uh, you have to have your man-eaters. It's not a question of if. I mean, there's my team. Man-eater, man-eater. Uh, great Poisoner, again, uh, Raisin is uh, solid as a rock. I'm actually interested to see how this team works because I think it's leveraging his ability to res 
but I haven't seen them in action. Uh, this one again, it's exactly the same team that I was talking about swapping her out. She is a hoss. Let's see if I can get... Eh, you know what, I'll pull her up the old-fashioned way. And it's a reminder that I needed to set my FPS higher so that it doesn't take so damn long. Let's see her index. So she is in the Skinwalkers. And Fane, that's it. So, her skills, you know, uh, decrease defense and weaken, which is really nice, the defense part. The weaken's okay. Uh, here's where she hits them with the two poison debuffs and a decrease attack. And then uh, she steals turn meter. I don't think it works on the clan boss, which is good, because if you speed tune a team and you take some of his turn meter off, it'll jank up your ability to keep that team going and flowing. But there's a lot of very good poisoners. Um, yeah, we'll go to where's the Dark Elves? And go to Miss Z. Where are you at? There you are. I mean you can't you can't argue with the fact like yeah, the debuff spread, uh, it works if that guy's on the team, but you know, attacks all enemies, uh, clears the poison, that's the one that you really don't want to use, but this one, 50% uh, chance, 75 when booked, of uh, placing a 5% uh, poison, and then also here, 40% uh, chance of uh, placing a uh, poison debuff as well, but she attacks three times, so you're probably going to pop a poison, it's really good. Again, it's just the her going and making everything go pop, you're like, shit. Other than that, though, let's go ahead and change this over. Options. There we go. Just let it all, all look sad and fast. Again, yeah, let me show you an Ultra Nightmare. He's an interesting build. Uh, before they patched it, having him on your team meant that you could actually have the clan, blo clan boss reflect so much damage that they would end up killing themselves and you could one key. Uh, that was super fun. I saw a, uh, a pre-fix clan boss um, build. It was him and a couple other just random uh, teammates and I think by turn 10 or 15 he'd already racked up himself 70 million damage it was insane but we'll just go with the old faithful now everyone start that on auto if you start on auto uh, they will pop the immortal right off the get or unkillable and you will have to restart this and you'll lose your key, which is not fun at all. So again, A1, here is a 2A1, here is a 1, here is a 3, here is a 3. Here is a 1, A2. A1 for him, A1 again, A2, A2, and we're at the top of the third lap, A3, E smacks, A1, and the last A1 for this guy, auto, and there you are. Alright guys. And let this go through and I'll see you in a few minutes while I'm watching something else.
So made it through. Got a smooth $100 million. But uh, again, just to make sure that you get to that ultra nightmare, because you are looking to get over, oh, it's 70.2, not 72. But again, the drop info, I mean, the values there. Here, here, especially, that's great. The books are, I mean, one of the few places you can really consistently get books in the game. But even if, you know, you're just able to knock out just over 17, let's look at the drops. You're still getting purple, still have a chance of getting six, still getting Lego books, gems. You can't argue with that. And then people are like, well, what about, you know, I'm just doing Nightmare. Okay, let's see what bottom tier Nightmare gets you. Nice Guardian chest. I mean, you're still getting five uh, star stuff to help build. Purple gems, regular gems, or purple shards. Again, lots of value. You get into the ultimate chest, and you're like, ooh. Chance to get gold. Chance to get books, gems, five-star gear. So, it's worth it. Definitely worth it. And then, uh, guys, I appreciate you hanging out with me, watching this, and just checking out how to get it done. If you uh, like what you see, uh, please feel free to like and subscribe more. If you have questions or comments or stuff that you'd like to see other than this shit, uh, by all means, reach out to me and see what's good, and I'll let you know. Thank you again, and have a great day.